A marine surveying company was engaged to inspect a barge berthed at a shipyard. On day one, the surveyor arrived at the shipyard. He met with the maintenance superintendent, who represented the barge owner, and the captain of the barge's tugboat. Together, they boarded the barge. The surveyor realized that the manholes to the barge tanks were closed. As the tanks were not ventilated, the surveyor asked for the manholes to be opened and that he would be back for inspection the next day. The surveyor then left the barge. On the next morning, the manholes were opened. At 9.45 a.m., the surveyor arrived and met with the superintendent. After a short discussion, he left to look for the captain, who was supposed to accompany him on the inspection. Meanwhile, it started to rain. At 10.15 a.m., the superintendent received a call from the captain informing him that the surveyor had not met with him. The captain soon arrived at the security post. After a while, the rain stopped. A crew was mobilized to search for the missing surveyor. It was 11 a.m. During the search, the crew suspected that the missing surveyor might be inside one of the barge's tanks. The search for the surveyor in the tanks began. It was noon. A gas test was conducted before the worker entered the manhole of a tank. The oxygen level in the tank was only 10%. A breathing apparatus would be needed to enter the tank. As no functioning breathing apparatuses were available, a helmet used for blasting operations was used instead. The worker then entered the manhole and caught a glimpse of the surveyor. It was 1.15 p.m. Subsequently, rescue personnel with proper breathing apparatuses managed to reach the surveyor. However, the surveyor had already stopped breathing. By the time SEDF personnel arrived and retrieved his body, it was 2.30 p.m. A simple surveying job resulted in the loss of a life. What went wrong? Insufficient planning, preparation and communication. The maintenance superintendent and captain were not aware that the surveyor needed to enter the tanks. No preparations were made prior to the inspection. The manholes were only opened on the second morning which resulted in not having enough time to ventilate the tanks. Entry procedures not followed. An entry permit was not applied and gas tests were not conducted. Because the surveyor entered the barge tank without an entry permit, he violated safety rules and placed his life in danger. Although the surveyor was supposed to be accompanied by the captain, he proceeded with the inspection alone. Lack of emergency procedures. The shipyard did not have a proper emergency plan for the rescue of people in the confined space. Rescue equipment was also not readily available. It took more than an hour for the rescue personnel to reach the surveyor after locating his position. Lessons learned. Risk assessment. Before starting work in a confined space, always conduct a risk assessment to identify safety and health hazards. Measures to minimize risks should have been implemented. Warning signs. Warning signs must be displayed at every entry point of a confined space to warn against unauthorized entry. Entry permit. Ensure that the entry permit is valid before entering a confined space. Throughout work in the confined space, check again that the permit is valid and has been correctly endorsed. Confined space attendant. When work is carried out in a confined space, a confined space attendant should be stationed outside the confined space to keep a lookout. In the event of an emergency, the attendant must not enter the confined space. Instead, he should raise the alarm and activate the emergency rescue plan. Proper emergency plan. All premises where confined space work is carried out must institute a proper emergency plan. This plan should include easy access to rescue equipment and trained rescue personnel. 